Andrew, nice to meet you. Welcome to the TV show Encerrados from Colombia. My name is Pulga and uh, we're very excited to talk with you. I wanted to thank you for uh, the time you're giving us. And hello, Estefania, how are you? I'm okay, thank you. I would like to start uh, asking you about something that is very unique about the series and is that normally in cinematography people try to avoid reflections, but in the TV show we uh, have the relationship with the, with the, between Mark and Steven, uh, the communication between them is in the reflections. How does the team build a set trying to maintain so many reflective surfaces without screwing it up? Yeah, the reflections were a real challenge and um, each one was different. You know, him talking to himself on a wall in a storage locker um, is very different than him talking to himself, let's say, in a puddle of water. And they always, uh, they each have their unique challenges um, and it requires a lot of testing, a lot of thought beforehand about how to, how to do each one. Um, you have to be very cognizant of what the camera is doing because anytime the camera moves, it adds another layer, a huge amount of um, work for us to recreate reflections. Um, you know, it's a it, each one is approached differently, and some of them are done very old school filmmaking techniques, um, where Oscar can just kind of change from character to character, and the camera can pan and do this. Some are done with split screens. Some are done with blue screen. You know, some are done with techno dollies where the camera can do the repeat a move that we had done um, done live and then they would be shot many months later and Oscar would do the other side of the conversation. I try not to be um, convenient in the way that mirrors were around. I try to have them be accidentally there or embedded into the architecture. The reflective surfaces is something that when we do movies, we need to, to deal with it all the time. So we place them in a way that the light doesn't bounce on it, or we place them in the way where there are dark surfaces on top, so they don't reflect, you know. Uh, which other resources did you use to, like, to put in the scene uh, the mental problems of the main character? Mm. Yeah, I mean, it, it's always a challenge to, to get in the head of a character um, and to put it on screen. And so it, for me, at least, it's always important to, to try to think about it personally. Like, what would I be experiencing if I was in this situation? Um, and, you know, the paranoia that Mark is feeling when he's first talking to Harrow um, in his office in the mental facility. Um, and then you kind of approach it from there, like, well, if he's paranoid and he's kind of piecing things together, how can we help that with the camera? Can we do some things out of focus? Can we give, you know, some special shots to items in the room as he's kind of piecing things together? Um, it always helps just to come first from a character's perspective. We had uh, um, psychologists and psychiatrists guide us to portrait um, a double or multiple personality disorder in a way that is respectful and uh, uh, loyal to the sensibility of uh, the issue. And how do you and the team give that like Egyptian look uh, to a city like some of the of the stones and fights that we have seen in the chapters that are already on the on air. I think in the comics uh, is already managing to have them in there. You know, Konju is uh, uh, in the comics already part of the comic. There are comics visual where in New York City there is a pyramid in the middle of Fifth Avenue. So I think we just took that inspiration and uh, absorb what the comics was dictating. Um, yeah, I mean, the, we had a great leader in, in Mohamed Diab, who um, is from Cairo, and um, you know, and there was also a, a considerable amount of research and, um, and giving it a feeling of authenticity and the Cairo that, or Egypt that um, modern day Egyptian audiences may recognize. Um, we wanted to make it feel authentic and not uh, not forced in any way. You know, I just think it's our job to to try to come from a place of um, for care and effort and you know, do the best that we can. 
I would like to know how did you manage to make a contrast between the outfit of the main character and the surroundings of every scene? Well, I knew that the costume was white, so, you know, I, we, we just, the costume was one of the first things that was developed. So, you know, everything, also, Moon Knight is a lot shot at night. So the costume, it's being white, it's uh, itself a stand out by the environment. What, what has been your, like, your favorite moment, moment in the TV show to this point? I really liked, um, I really like everything in the mental hospital uh, at the end of episode four. That stuff's really fun. You know, for me, shooting, uh, shooting that Tomb Buster sequence was incredibly fun to make something kind of feel a little cheesy, a little early 90s, late 80s, um, and lighting it a little differently, not going for realism and, and just having fun with the camera. And, you know, after, after you shoot for many months and you're kind of getting tired, it's really fun to shoot something that looks totally different and you can just laugh and have a good time about things that are cheesy and, um, you know, cheesy lighting and big, big smoke and stuff like that. So the Tomb Buster stuff was a lot of fun for me and um, really refreshing. I wanted to ask you a last question and I hope I'm not pushing the, bot the buttons too much. And is that with only four episodes on air, the fans are already in love with the character and they are speculating about his future, of course, because, you know, that's how the fans work. And is there a possibility of seeing Moon Knight with the Midnight Suns in the future? Um, I can't say, but um, you know, I'm super glad that people are excited about it, and um, you know, I'm I'm really excited to watch the last two episodes with them. I haven't yet seen them either um, in their finished state, so um, I'm looking forward to watching them on TV and uh, when they air in the next couple of weeks. Stefania, thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for having me, and um, thank you to the folks in Colombia for watching. I'm very, very excited the show's being well received, and um, hope you enjoy the last two episodes. <laughs> thank you very much, Andrew.